two weeks ago, I made a video called Before You Buy AM5, and much to my surprise, that video absolutely popped off. And so to all the new subscribers, welcome aboard. I'm happy to have you. And for all the people who hit the like button, which is now over 2,000 of you, wow, thank you so much. Now, the majority of the comments were positive, but unfortunately, some of the comments were actually quite negative. And I do want to address some of those comments, not because I can't take criticism, but only because a lot of the negative comments I feel like are weaponizing other big tech YouTubers content in order to spread misinformation or in order to fanboy for their platform of choice or whatever. And so I want to address some of that. Now, first of all, let's address the elephant in the room, ASUS. Yes, ASUS has royally screwed up point blank period. There's no doubt about it. And when it comes to AM5 and all the AM5 issues, ASUS is by far the worst motherboard to go with. I will agree with anybody on that. I think the evidence is absolutely overwhelming. However, I do think where some of the things start to fall apart is assuming that ASUS is the only motherboard manufacturer that has these issues and that AM5 has has no other issues outside of the Asus motherboards. That is simply not true, and that is what I want to address today. Now, Steve from Gamers Nexus did an entire video calling out Asus and basically calling them a scumbag company, and rightfully so, because Asus did try to issue a beta BIOS and tell people, hey, it's not stable and we can't guarantee it'll work, and by the way, if it does mess something up, we won't cover it under your warranty. Obviously, that is a massive problem and no one's gonna be okay with that, and so Steve rightfully call them out for it. So thank you, Steve, for that. Thanks, Steve. And then on top of that, Jay's Two Cents did his own video talking about how he was officially ending his partnership with Asus. They can't even send him a functioning motherboard with the correct color. So how in the world are they supposed to take care of all the other customers? I mean, come on, guys. This is ridiculous. This is a big tech YouTuber who is here to promote your products and help you sell units, and you can't even get him the right components that work. I mean, come on. So obviously Asus has a whole lot of problems going on here. And I, I think it's important to call that out, recognize it and all that stuff. However, the problem starts to come in when other people in the PC community listen to only part of these videos, take it out of context or whatever, and they want to weaponize it in order to spread misinformation. And the misinformation that is being spread right now is the fact that people think AM5 has no issues and that only ASUS is a problem and you only have issues with AM5 if you have an ASUS motherboard. That could not be further from the truth. And I wanna make this abundantly clear. I have zero problems with Jay's two cents. I have zero problems with Gamers Nexus and his team. I think they all do phenomenal work. In fact, Steve, if you ever watched this, I'm in Georgia. I think you're in North Carolina. That, that's not too far of a drive. So if you want to link up, I'll buy you lunch. Again, I got zero issues. So no problem there. Now, I do have problems when people start to come to my comment section, though, and tell me that I didn't do enough research or AM5 is totally fine and that I should have known better than buying an ASUS product because apparently ASUS has never made a good product or something like that. I mean, the things you see in the comment section are just, I mean, they're mind-numbingly dumb. They, they just are. I mean, there's no other way to say it. But let's go ahead and start to break some of the stuff down. Now, in regards to my previous video about AM5, I was simply trying to share my personal experience and headaches with the platform. And I think the majority of you were able to discern that and say, thank you for sharing your experience and you really appreciated it. And I'm not saying that I was perfect or I didn't make any mistakes. In fact, I did make a mistake. And later in this video, I'm going to correct that mistake on something I said and stay tuned for that. I have no problem admitting when I'm wrong about something. But some of you also looked at that video and just thought it was nothing but a mistake and I had nothing but user error the entire time and that couldn't be further from the truth. You try to tell me I should have done more research and all this stuff. The fact of the matter is AM5 is a very young platform. There are plenty of growing pains with it. There are still lots of things we don't know. At the time of me buying my AM5 platform, Jay had not yet done his video about ASUS. Steve had not yet done his video about ASUS. And all the videos that Jay had provided about AM5, I watched, I took into account. I knew I would have some issues and some headaches, but nothing to the actual extent of what really happened. And so that that's why I made my video because I was floored by just how bad my experience was. And you gotta keep in mind, I'm a small YouTuber, I'm not making a lot of money, so I had to use what little bit of money I did make to go buy all of this stuff, which is incredibly expensive. These platform upgrades are not cheap. When I spend my money on something that's very expensive and I have nothing but a bad experience from it, I'm going to share that with you so that you can avoid the mistakes that I made. And so again, like I said, the majority of you understood where I was coming from and I do appreciate that, but for the rest of you, let's address some of that misinformation. So first and foremost, no, 
AM5 is not perfect. AMD is not perfect. No, the only issue is not with Asus. I will agree that Asus is by far and large the biggest issue here for sure. If you're on AM5, by far you will have the most issues if you have an Asus motherboard. I will 110% agree with that. I think the evidence for that is absolutely overwhelming. Now, in order to back up the claim that AM5 is just an all around buggy platform and it's not exclusive to Asus motherboards, here is what I can provide you. Down below, you will find a link to a subreddit. And in that subreddit, you will find multiple people talking about their hardware and their experience on the AM5 platform. And a few things should stand out to you. Number one, there are people who have issues and people who have no issues at all. And that includes, yes, people with ASUS motherboards and people without ASUS motherboards. And even people with ASUS motherboards are claiming to have zero issues and everything is working totally fine. And again, I do agree that you should avoid ASUS here, but I think this speaks to the bigger problem of the inconsistency and the instability of the platform as a whole. You can't simply just point a finger and say, hey, if you have an ASUS motherboard, you will have issues. And if you avoid ASUS, you won't have issues. That's not true. But yet that is what so many of you are trying to say in my comment section now. Now, in addition to all of this, I did additional research per your comments. And I talked to people in my Discord and I polled my community here on YouTube and took in over a thousand votes. And here are a couple of testimonials. One user by the name of Omega XD talks about having an Aurora's B650 Elite AX motherboard. And initially he had some post issues with a DRAM light and he had to put one stick of RAM in the A2 slot to even post. But then once he got in the windows, he still had a DRAM light. Now I'm a bit confused here because I've never been in a situation where I'm in windows actively using it totally fine. And yet I'm getting postcode lights on my motherboard. Hmm, maybe it is an AM5 bug. He goes on to clarify that he restarted the PC and the light went away, but now he's concerned, is the system stable, reliable? Will it last him? Or does he need to return it within the return window? And that is honestly a valid concern. I would be concerned for that as well. Another user who went to AM5, bought an MSI motherboard, said he returned everything, went back to AM4 because of all the AM5 issues from boot inconsistencies all the way to blue screens of death. And honestly, I don't blame you. I really don't. I mean, everybody wants something that just works. And quite frankly, when you pay that amount of money for any piece of hardware, product, service, whatever, it should give you a good experience, not a headache. And so I don't blame you for returning it. Another user, Steven Smith, shared with me that his motherboard has now failed twice. Not once, but twice. He had an MSI motherboard and he does seem to think that maybe Amazon might be selling faulty motherboards. I don't really know how you confirm that, prove it, disprove it, whatever. But the fact is, there is somebody who was simply making an online purchase saying, hey, I wanna go to AM5, give me that motherboard and it doesn't work, not once, but twice. And lastly, here's a comment from somebody in the subreddit I talked about earlier. He said the move to AM5 is honestly his biggest regret in years, mostly because he paid a lot of money to basically be a beta tester. People want their systems to work. They don't wanna push the button and hope and pray it might turn on. They want to know it will turn on, and I don't blame them. I want the same thing. Even right now, I still have posting issues from time to time where my system won't boot up automatically. I have to kill the power on the power power supply, wait a couple of seconds, turn it on, and then boom, I'm back in the windows. And I still don't know why that's happening. I talked about it in my previous video. So the fact of the matter is there are multiple AM5 issues across multiple different kinds of motherboards. It's not just Asus. The platform as a whole is buggy and it has issues. And you know what? That is to be expected on a brand new platform. It's called growing pains. But at the same time, I don't think we're doing anybody any favors by going around telling them, hey, Asus is the only problem here. Buy something else and you'll be fine. That's not necessarily true. Now, earlier in the video, I did say that I made a mistake in my previous video and that I would be correcting that. And I'm about to do that right now. But first, let me say thank you to all of my Patreon members for supporting me and helping me build a sponsor for eFuture. And if you would like to join the Patreon team, you can get exclusive behind the scenes access to never before seen footage and footage that will never be here on YouTube and helping me build a sponsor for eFuture. Click the link in the pinned comment below. And now let me correct what I was wrong about. So. In my previous video, I talked about the clock speed of the 7800X3D, and I said that it was supposed to boost up to five gigahertz, and out of the box, it did not do that. But then I said in order to hit five gigahertz, you would need to enable Expo and use Curve Optimizer. I was both right and wrong in that statement. I had someone leave a comment and try to explain that Expo does not in fact impact clock speed, and we were going back and forth about it for a while, and then ultimately he messaged me in my DMs on Discord, and we went back and forth for a little while, and once I really understood where he was coming from, 
I decided, let me test it. So here is some footage. You have Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 on shipment, and you can see at stock speeds, we are never getting above 4,800 megahertz, give or take. But then with Expo enabled and no curve optimizer settings at all, you can see my clock speed is basically the same. And lastly, when I do enable curve optimizer, but I have Expo disabled, you can see we are hitting those five gigahertz speeds. And so overall, I was technically wrong about that in the way that I worded it. And so what I probably should have said was, in order to get the maximum performance out of your AM5 system, you should enable Expo and use Curve Optimizer. Now, speaking of Curve Optimizer, I also said I'm using a negative 30 curve offset. And you know what? That is true, it's working for me. But I should probably clarify further that it does come down to Silicon Lottery. So that may or may not work for you. Your mileage may vary. You're gonna have to go trial by fire on this one and just play with your settings and see what works best for you. But for me, negative 30 works totally fine. And now to finish the video, I wanna talk about the QVL or qualified vendor list. Now in my previous video, I did not mention that at all whatsoever. And so when I started talking about having RAM issues, people got upset that I did not clarify if I checked the list or not. And then all of my problems were attributed to the QVL. Actually, it's kind of funny how things work now that I think about it because that was all before Steve made his video about ASUS. And so everybody said, oh, AM5 is fine. All of your issues are QVL related. And then Steve made his video and now magically nobody talks about the QVL anymore. They only talk about how everything is an ASUS problem and I had an ASUS motherboard. And so I find that incredibly interesting to say the least. How about this? Let's talk about the QVL. The QVL or qualified vendor list is basically a list on your motherboard manufacturer's website that tells you all the different RAM kits that are compatible with your motherboard. Now, this is the same place that you get your BIOS. Now, speaking of BIOS, hmm, why do I feel like we've had a lot of BIOS issues recently? <laughs> Oh, we have. Now let me get this straight. The way that some of you talk in the comment section, you're not simply saying, hey, you know, as a friendly reminder, you might want to check the QVL next time. Okay, cool. That's not how you're going about it. You're basically holding up the QVL as if it's like some type of gospel an infallible list or whatever. And that could not be further from the truth. First of all, the list is maintained by your motherboard manufacturer who is over here blowing up CPUs with their BIOS updates and then not wanting to honor warranties. And yet you expect me to trust them with the QVL list? Come on. And then on top of that, the QVL list must be updated. And it is totally possible that they are behind on updating the list. So technically you could have a RAM kit that is compatible, but for whatever reason, it's not on the list. And so therefore, if you're only relying on that list, maybe you missed out on getting some cheaper RAM and saving yourself some money, or maybe you missed out on getting some better performing RAM because it all wasn't on that list. I'm not saying you should never look at the list. I'm not saying that the list is never right. I'm not saying it's not a good tool to have, but what I am saying is that it is not the end all be all. And the amount of comments I got about that thing is a little bit ridiculous. Now, when it comes to the AM4 platform, that's a different story. That platform has been around for multiple years now. It is rock solid. The lists are quite extensive. I would definitely recommend it. In fact, I actually made a video called 50 PC tips in under 10 minutes. And in that video, I did talk about the QVL list, but yet nobody watches that video. The video where I don't talk about the QVL list, everybody watches that video and I get blasted for it. And so you can't win for losing here on YouTube the joys of being a content creator. Now, with all of that being said, I wanna point out a couple of other things about the QVL. I will have all the links listed below for your reference, but as you can see here, somebody has made the claim that they did check the QVL at the time of them purchasing their motherboard and the RAM that they bought was in fact on the list. And now, however long later, that RAM has been retroactively removed from the list, but yet the RAM continues to work totally fine with zero issues. And then on top of that, here's an entire forum addressing the issue about RAM being on the QVL and if it's required in order for RAM to properly function. Spoiler, no, no, it's not. That's basically the conclusion there. It's a best practice. It's a good to have. Again, it's a great tool to reference, but it's not the end all be all. And I don't have anything against the QVL, but what I do have something against is the fact that you seem to think that all the issues I had were simply attributed to the fact that I didn't check the QVL or I bought RAM that wasn't on the QVL. I'm not saying the QVL is bad. It's great, actually. Have it as a good resource, but don't act like it's the only way to buy RAM and that if you didn't buy RAM that way, you were definitely guaranteed to fail. Again, just like Asus, that's not exactly true. But hey, that's all I got for this video. Uh, this is actually my second time recording it. My voice is shot. Please show support by hitting that like button, dropping a comment, and if you're new, get subscribed, check out the Patreon for additional benefits. Thank you to all, and until next time, E-Rock out.